I think at this point, Democrats are probably excited for the prospect of getting rid of Biden and getting something I heard better that for the war. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you've heard people saying that. Basically, it's like, here's how you get rid of the guy. Because apparently, he's planning on running again. He's already campaigning. And it's like, he's in a weak position. If it ends up being DeSantis against Biden, I don't think Biden wins. Yeah. I, I, I agree that he's probably too old to run for a second term. I, I, would, I would love for the Democrats to nominate somebody that's younger. Um, I, I think that if it was Trump Biden, I think Biden would win. I think if it was DeSantis Biden, I think Biden's going to have a difficult time. Who would you guys vote for, uh, DeSantis or Biden? It's still Biden. 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 Okay. Why though? Just because I, I, I agree more with his views than the whole view. <laughs> well, I, I can certainly understand from like, especially the, the culture war and all that stuff. But uh, w what has Biden done, or what are his views that you think are are, are good or that are worth giving a second term to? I, I think he's done a lot, a lot of good. Uh, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I could name several things. I think the Chips Act, which brought manufacturing of computer chips back to the United States, I think that's great for manufacturing here, but also great for, uh, I think, our national security. Uh, the PACT Act with the burn pit thing, which he signed into law. Um, the uh, the cap on senior uh, prescription drug costs at $2,000. I think that's great. I think there's a lot of old people in the United States who aren't even buying drugs that they need because of the expenses. And, and I, I, I love the fact that he signed that new law. A, a lot of these things, I think, you know, before the show, we were talking about how uh, we had Destiny on. What's his name? Steve? Steve Benelli. Benelli? Yeah, is it Benelli? Benelli. I thought it was Bonnell. Isn't it Bonnell? Bonnell? I thought there was an I. I don't know. Let Maybe there's an check. I. But, uh, you know, I was saying, like, obviously, on, on a lot of core issues like healthcare, you know, uh, rights of the workers, bringing jobs back, bringing chip manufacturing, like we're gonna, that, that's a good one, by the way. Oh, I it's, think, it's Stephen Bonnell the second, so I thought that was yeah. an I. Sorry, Steve. There you go. I was like, I was, wait, there's no I in there. But uh, one, of, one of the issues I take, uh, the most important thing, foreign policy. For me, I, I often go off on, on foreign policy. Like we had uh, Alad Eliyahu, he's, he's a reporter for us. And then we got into a yelling match because he's like, he called himself jokingly the ne resident neocon. Because he was saying, like, we should be at war in, in these countries. We should be stopping communism. We should be, it, it should be a unipolar world where the U.S. is in control. And my attitude is kind of like, okay, I get that. I understand why you'd argue that. But I'm, I'm pretty much against U.S. intervention in all these countries, effectively invading countries to remove their government and their cultures and impose our own will and stuff like that. So when it comes to Joe Biden, you know, I've seen what Joe Biden did in, 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 when he was vice president. And it was... I, I, I think corruption is an understatement, right? As soon as he gets, he gets put in charge of the war in Iraq, his brother gets lucrative contracts. We see the expansion of the wars in the Middle East under the Obama administration. We see the, the drone killings of children, which, okay, fine. That's, you know, that's on Barack Obama, like the killing of Abdul Rahman al alaki but also other American citizens like Anwar al alaki Under Donald Trump, we certainly had some bad things. There's a, a commando raid in Yemen, which the people there claim killed an eight-year-old American girl. It's a bad claim. It's not the same thing as what we know that Obama did kill Abdul Rahman al alaki But then Trump tries negotiating peace with North Korea, actually walking through the DMZ into North Korea with no security detail. He gets us the Abraham Accords. He gets, you know, uh, pulling our troops out of Syria, at least as much as he could, without the U.S. military actually lying to him and us about how, how many troops we had there, setting a timeline for Afghanistan withdrawal. So those things for me are extremely important. And I can certainly understand, you know, you mentioned those domestic policies, but I'm curious your thoughts on that regard. I mean, when it comes to war, Joe Biden is, in, in my opinion, indefensible. Yeah, I, I mean, you bring up some good points about international policy. And, and I, I tend to focus more on national stuff, stuff that's happening in our country. I'm, I'm pretty much against war, too. So, I, I mean, it's hard to argue with some of that stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, how many wars are we in right now? Oh, man. How we many? don't even know about them. Yeah, the <laughs> drone war. A lot of them are clandestine. A lot of them are secret. But, and that's because of Donald Trump. A lot of that's well, a lot well, of the drone wars. Well, there's the no, proxy, no, there's no. The proxy he war. He signed these drone wars into well, secrecy. So the no, no, no. I, 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 want, I want to expand on that because there's the proxy war in Ukraine. There's also expanded operations right now in Africa. There's limited operations in Syria. Uh, very limited uh, covert ops in Libya. 
Um, always a troop presence in um, Iraq still with the fighting between the Sunni Shiites and the Iranians also getting involved there. Um, a couple of years ago, we were bombing uh, places in the Philippines. I don't know if we're still doing that now. A lot of this, again, is covert. So we moved from overt war to, of course, a lot of clandestine war, limited war. The Hen- we kind of implemented the Henry Kissinger doctrine. And to answer your question, uh, there's probably a lot more wars that we're involved in than we actually know about. Yeah, and I and I I just mean official wars. We got out of the Afghanistan, of course. But no, I, and and I'm anti-interventionist. I, I don't think we should be dabbling in all these countries. I I don't have a a negative opinion on us helping Ukraine, though. I I think that given given what's happening over there, I think we do need to help them just so that Russia's aggression doesn't spread throughout the rest of Europe. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, I hate to see us supplying weapons that are killing people, but at the same time, I fear more what Russia would do if they went unchecked. Well, how do you feel about U.S.'s direct involvement in Ukraine with our special right. forces on the ground? I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. Well, that's happening right now. And also Ukrainian soldiers are being sent to Oklahoma in order to get specific American training. I also forgot one very important war, and that's the war in Yemen, which is still continuing right now. It's a larger proxy war between the United States and Saudi Arabian coalition, which is creating one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world right now. I think these issues do matter. And and I think not a lot of people take them seriously because they happen outside of the United States. But I definitely think we definitely need more of a conversation about this because the war in Ukraine, it's, it's, it's a very very dangerous situation. And I understand that, you know, a, a lot of people are vying for influence or vying for territory or vying for power. But I think it's clearer than ever, I don't, if you guys agree or disagree, that the United States and other Western powers like the United Kingdom have prevented peace deals, have prevented a stop to this larger pro- uh, proxy conflict and have prolonged it and are prolonging it by giving more weapons to it, making sure that it won't, it won't stop anytime soon, which I think is tragic for the people of Ukraine, tragic for the people in Europe, and also tragic for everyone else in the world, as of course, this larger proxy war is also creating a humanitarian crisis when it comes to energy resources, fertilizer, and affecting some of the poorest people uh, in the world. Yeah, but a, a peace deal between Russia and Ukraine would require Ukraine to give Russia something that they didn't have before the war started, right? And and uh, I mean, when it comes to peace deals and the negotiations, every side uh, has to give something up. So Russia would give something up, Ukraine would give something up. I mean, we, we reached the point where even Henry Kissinger, uh, an absolute war criminal, the butcher of Cambodia is coming out publicly saying, guys, this is getting out of hand. We need a peace deal here. Yeah, but so when, when it comes to negotiations, uh, both, of, both of the parties are going to have to concede on something. But it's, it's hard to say, OK, you know, Russia is, should gain for invading Ukraine. Like, so if they agree to a peace deal now, what to stop them from two months later saying we're invading again and we're going to inch farther and we want another peace deal and we're going to do the same thing another two. You know, like if you give if you give Russia something. They're going to be like, we can get something, and they're I mean, going to know they can get something. Well, like, that's okay. that's what they would be saying on the other side too. This is the perpetual yeah, kind of prolonging it's Ukraine conflict. giving up their land. Not I always. I, I, that's, I actually, that, that's one potential stipulation. But the first original peace deal that was actually sabotaged by the West was that uh, Russia go back to its original territories before uh, the war uh, started, and then we had Boris Johnson come to Ukraine and said, "No way, you're agreeing to this specific peace deal." So, what are the parameters? I mean, you're you're bringing up one parameter. It, if that's on the negotiation table, it at least should be negotiated. But we're even prevented from coming to the table and negotiating, which I think is absolutely crazy, and rooting for more war when there's so many things at stake here, when there's so many innocent lives being lost here, is just absolutely crazy in my opinion. And, and this is my answer. You know, you're mentioning like you, you concern more about domestic policy, and I can com- I completely understand yeah. that. But how how many years was it where flint pipes? were not fixed and these kids are getting, you know, there's like legionnaires in the older population, lead and other contaminants. And now we're learning in a bunch of different cities across this country. So that's why when when AOC first announced the Green New Deal, when it was very, very rudimentary, when it was just like this idea of we're going to rebuild infrastructure and massively invest in renewable energies, I was 100% on board. I was like, this sounds amazing. Then she puts out this document where it's like, once we do away with air transport and farting cows, which I understand was a joke, but I was just like, I don't understand what free co- free college for people of color has to do with fixing pipes in places like Flint. And the response I got from people, uh, a lot of people on the left was, well, it's all tied to the same problem. And I'm like, no, no, it literally isn't. Kids are drinking lead. And instead of spending the, the you know, what is it, $30 million or however much it was going to cost to fix these pipes, 
we're blowing up people in foreign countries. And I think the reason we're doing it is because the U.S. will do anything to maintain the petrodollar, that the, that the, the world reserve currency will stay the U.S. dollar. So we give money away to Pakistan for gender studies programs because it means they'll spend it because it means everyone will maintain confidence. So we neglect the things that are actually going on here at home. They throw crumbs out. Meanwhile, the southern border is completely just shattered. And you've got this, you've got people and children dying in the river, crawling through the desert. They ignore those issues. It feels like they're just offering up whatever they can to keep people placated while they actually siphon away the resources from the people in this country for the issues of blowing people up overseas. And more importantly, when it comes to Ukraine, my view of Ukraine is to go back to what you were saying about Ukraine would have to give something up. I don't, I don't actually view it that way. And this is kind of a hard thing to say because I have Ukrainian friends and it's really difficult to talk to them about this. But Ukraine wouldn't be giving up anything because there is no Ukraine. There's a proxy land between Russia and the United States. It's been there since the fall of the Soviet Union. And the US and Russia, or I should say NATO and Russia, have been playing dirty games in that territory. Russia regrets giving it up with the fall of the Soviet Union. They think it was a mistake. They need Crimea as a warm water port, access to the Black Sea, to the Suez, Mediterranean, et cetera, et cetera. And they're mad that happened. So they want to take that first. Then they're running the risk because they only have that bridge. So they want a land bridge. That's why they want the Donbass region. The United States, of course, is doing influence operations through USAID and other organizations in Ukraine to gain influence. You end up in 2014. I'm actually there. I'm interviewing people about this. Yes, Many of the Ukrainians outright are like, we would rather be with the EU than Russia because we remember the Soviet Union and it was bad. But then the president gets removed, flees to Russia. You get Zelensky instead. You get the whole fiasco with Burisma, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden and all of that corruption. And then I look at it like you've got Burisma, an energy company. Surprise, surprise. Gazprom has effectively an, a, a, a monopoly in, in, in Europe. It's, it's Russia's monopoly through Gazprom, through Ukraine. The U.S. starts putting its, its resources and assets into Ukraine in the energy sector, notably Hunter Biden, as well as a former CIA uh, director or something, working at Burisma. A prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, is then investigating Mykola Zlachevsky, the founder of this company, for corruption. I think 12 to 14 different investigations. Joe Biden then flies there, says, if you don't fire the prosecutor, you're not getting the billion dollars, which is an illegal quid pro quo. I'm not saying he did it to protect his son, but his son did work for the company, did make money from that. The investigations were happening and it was illegal for him to do everything together. And I'm just like, you know what I see? I see a guy, Joe Biden, who, when he was the vice president, was placed in charge of the war in Iraq. And then immediately his brother got lucrative multi-million dollar contracts to build housing and other buildings and other construction in that country. Surprise, surprise. It, a Politico wrote an article called Biden Inc., where they go over all of the lucrative deals the Biden family has just fallen into in relation to the position of Joe Biden. So now we're looking at Ukraine. Joe Biden's dumping a hundred plus billion dollars, just constantly saying, give more money, give more money, give more money. Zelensky is refusing to negotiate and saying, we will not surrender. By the way, US, give us more money. And I'm sitting here being like, can we fix our border? Can we fix the pipes? Can we make sure these kids are getting clean drinking water? Can we stop blowing up people overseas? My view of this whole thing is that you've got a corrupt parasite class like Joe Biden, and, and not just him, but many of the Republicans as well. And they just seek to extract as much as po possible for themselves. And I think what they're probably doing at this point is transferring their resources to like Panama, because we learned that from the Panama Papers, so they can put it in holding so that when the U.S. finally implodes because they've extracted everything they can, they're going to send it over to China, where state capitalism will favor them. Long story short. It's a good story. <laughs> 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 well, OK, so I, I mean, I... I I don't disagree that we shouldn't that we should be concentrating more on America and, and what's happening in this country. Um, a lot of the, your Joe Biden stuff, I disagree with. I, I think that Victor Shokin was pretty much wanted to be the whole Western world. Our allies all wanted him ousted because he was a corrupt prosecutor and he wasn't actually prosecuting people he should have been prosecuting. But like who? <clears throat> I, I mean, if we're talking about corrupted look, politicians was, in Ukraine, there's all there, Ukraine right. is known for corrupt right. politicians. But, you know, which but, but is, which, listen, sorry, these guys had a. No, uh, mm -hmm. to, to address that, I can agree. Right, the the West did want Viktor Shokin out. That was the policy. The issue is that when Viktor Shokin got ousted, Mykola Zlachevsky, this is what Biden said. He said he wasn't prosecuting the guy. He wasn't going after him. So we got rid of him. They bring in a new guy and Zlachevsky returns. So so the, the, uh, I think it was London froze uh, uh, Zlachevsky's assets. 
Viktor Shokin gets removed by Biden. Zlochevsky immediately returns to Ukraine to, to resume his work. And then when Trump gets in and starts poking around, Zlochevsky flees the country again. So it, I, I'm just I'm not going to believe this argument that, well, we really wanted him out when removing him actually helped the guy that was supposedly the corrupt guy in the first place. It just doesn't it doesn't make sense at all. I, I mean, you can you can come up, you can say, you know, Hunter Biden was working in Ukraine. It's corrupt. He was feeding money back to Joe Biden. I mean, you could say well, I'm that. I'm not even but, saying any of that. But, 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 but I mean, I mean, people do, right? Right. But my but, point is, you've got a CIA director, you've got Hunter yeah. Biden. C- CIA director's name, by the way, is Joseph Kofer Black. He was on the board, right? Yeah, they put him on the board. And so it's, it's like, look, man, here, I'll tell you what I think. I don't think in this instance... Uh, that it's overtly like Joe Biden's getting 10% for the big guy with his son. I think it's that Europe didn't want to pay exorbitant prices for natural gas, but Russia's got him by the balls. The U.S. wanted to build a pipeline through Syria and Turkey called the Qatar Turkey Pipeline. Syria said our ally Russia would be mad at us if we let you do that, so we won't. Surprise, surprise, we get lucky and a civil war erupts in Syria, which is going to basically grant us access. Russia, of course, has their base in Tartus, creating all sorts of conflict. I think the U.S. wants to get cheaper energy into Europe. They want to strengthen the European Union with more energy, with with more economic development, because they want a stronger bloc to compete with China. In a certain sense, I'm not necessarily trusting all of of all of the elites. I think I mean I agree with you there. I think that's that's part of the U.S. It's a, plan. It's, yeah, right. It's a big component. And when Syria was was not willing to abide by uh, uh, these these uh, you know these. Uh, this offer, I suppose. Let's just call it convenient that there's a massive destabilization and the West is, of course, against Bashar, uh, Bashar al-Assad. Then when it comes to the fact that Gazprom runs, I think, 20 percent of natural gas through Ukraine, the U.S. all of a sudden has this interest in getting rid of a corrupt prosecutor who happens to have like 12 to 14 investigations into the founder of an energy company where Joe Biden's son and a CIA director are currently on the board. I think the U.S. is trying to gain control of energy makes a lot of sense. Russia's competing with them. They're using Ukraine as a proxy. I get it, man. You know, it's tough because I don't, I don't want the U.S. to falter. I don't want China to rise and take over. And then we have Chinese state communism. But I also take a look at Joe Biden flying Hunter to China on, on Air Force Two for private equity deals. And I'm just like, I don't trust them at all on any of this. Yeah, like, like I mean, I understand that. And I definitely think you, what you said is correct, that the U.S. Want, has a lot of interest in keeping the U.S. dollar value up because without it being up we can lose ground to china and our other adversaries but the the whole like you know i think they're right is quick to push this this joe biden hunter biden corruption thing like the 10 percent for the big guy that yeah. deal right <clears throat> that deal never took place that deal never actually went through and joe was a private citizen at the time that, that email all, was who sent. in a subsequent email said I, I don't want anything to do with this I mean, like, so, so, Joe so, I also mean, lied about his involvement repeatedly. Yeah, he he lied. He well, he either lied or he, he things were kind of. Uh, I mean, went over. So so he said that he never talked to his son about any of his business deals. And then there's pictures and, and, of him with his son and his yeah, but, buddies. Well, but he, that doesn't or, mean, yeah. he, that doesn't mean he had a business conversation with him. Maybe he went to. They lunch shared bank he, accounts. Uh, no, no, I'm saying with this with this guy. No, I know, I know, but like, yeah, they, they share bank. They and emails and texts and and phone numbers. So it's just like. Come on, man. Yeah, I, I mean, but that, so, then so, all the, all so the, you can jump to these conclusions that, yeah, since he said 10% for a big guy, he was dealing other deals, you know, since he got the, since he said Shokin should get fired, it was because Hunter was working for Burisma. And maybe that's the reason why, you know, there should be more, less children of presidents working in other countries. I mean, you could say there are plenty of instances with Kushner and Ivanka and I mean, what about the, the 666 Fifth Avenue deal in New York when Kushner couldn't get anybody to give him a lease and Qatar comes along right when Saudi Arabia is blockading Qatar and then Trump lifts the blockade as soon as Kushner gets the $1.4 billion. So, I mean, I, I, but there's no evidence that it's there two are linked, but you could definitely come sure. up with ideas that there's corruption going on, right? I mean, I, I think the, the issue is, as it pertains to Biden or Trump, a fair point is, yeah, it's always a pick your poison, right? Donald Trump, uh, I, I don't know exactly how this goes down. And, and, and again, a lot of this requires speculation, but I think there's a State Department website advertising Trump Doral or something like that. I don't know if you guys remember that. No. no. There, yeah, it was like a, a State Department website was like, stay at Trump Resorts or something. And, and people were like, yo, what the is going on? Like, you shouldn't be doing that. 
Trump wanted to have, I think, the G7 at Trump to rally yeah. in Florida. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he got backlash and was like, no. I certainly think you see a lot of this kind of stuff. But I think when it came to Donald Trump, there was actually, dis despite much of his shortcomings, which I certainly think there are many of, crossing into North Korea, that was really big for me. Crossing the DMZ. The Abraham Accords, I think, were really, really big. I certainly think there are questions. I think anybody who comes out and says that there's no, like, that, like, Trump or any anybody who, who says, like, oh, the Bidens weren't really doing this or the Trumps weren't really doing this, I'm going to be like, dude, everybody's always going to be thinking about themselves to a certain degree. Yeah. So my issue is, after assessing all of the details, I take a look at the Biden family and Biden Inc., as Politico magazine called it. I take a look at the history of this guy, his plagiarism, and the fortunes his families have tracked along with his positions in government. And it's just like, okay, this guy is just literally extracting from us. Donald Trump lost money becoming president. Like his net worth has dropped. He's lost millions of dollars. His tax returns actually well, showed on that he's- On paper, been, right? But you don't know. He could have foreign business deals that are being taxed in other countries. His social capital is off the, off the charts right yeah. now as well. Like I mean, the, is the it? Of, he was, a, he was a celebrity. Yeah, he made $5 million at the NFTs. There's amazing NFTs. Yeah, they, yeah, they were really funny. I mean, Cowboy Trump. <laughs> get a Cowboy Trump, get an astronaut Trump. Did he get one? I did not get yeah. one. I would not buy an NFT. 100 no, bucks not. each? Is that what they were? 100 bucks each. Something like yeah. That. And, and he sold and, them all within like that 20 was minutes like, or so an hour. And that was like, you know, I don't know, man. I think he dropped in the predicted market by like 10 cents when he did that because it was like, what I are you I follow doing? that too, yeah. <laughs> I posted a picture of one of his uh, one of his supporters rotting in jail and him looking through the cell be like, hey, you guys want to buy some <laughs> NFTs? So, uh, I, I mean, uh, talking about foreign policy here a little bit, there's corruption on both sides. I mean, Jared Kushner was negotiating better weapons deals for Saudi Arabia. All right, that's a lot of corruption there. With with North Korea, John Bolton sabotaged any possibilities of peace talks by comparing North Korea, saying that they're going into the Libyan model of foreign policy. But again, uh, we can always compare the two, but I, I, th I think it's fair to say that um, the, the Biden uh, presidency has a lot more room for corruption because he's a career politician. He's been in office. He knows everyone. He knows all the diplomats. He knows all the bureaucrats. He has a lot more finagling room to do a lot of really bad stuff. And from the beginning of his political career, he has been known as a man of the lobbyist. He has been giving a lot of special interest groups a lot of what they wanted, uh, specifically the military industrial complex, specifically big pharma, specifically a, a lot of the bigger agencies agencies that are now coming in through the bigger problems that he caused, and especially in Afghanistan. China, huge winner out of all of that. They're, they're gaining all the national resources uh, from Afghanistan. When, with Ukraine, BlackRock is getting all the lucrative contracts to rebuild that entire country after we spent so much money bombing the crap out of it uh, and, and causing so much chaos. Um, this is why I think it's important to look at not just Trump, but Biden, but any person in power in a very critical light and criticize them to the highest degree. But do you guys agree or disagree with me I, when it I, comes I, to saying... Get, get rid of the lobbyists. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but do you guys agree that, that Biden has more of a more room to be corrupted than Trump who hasn't been in politics that long. I, I, I think that one of the appeals of Trump in 2016 was that he wasn't connected to lobbyists. And, and I can see that as an appeal. But I don't know if that necessarily means that he's not going to be looking out for himself and his businesses. I, I think owning a bunch of businesses around the world and having those businesses profit, whether it's financially or from from a standpoint of getting name recognition for those businesses, I, I think that that can lead to just as much corruption. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's definitely a problem in politics. I, I think that a lot of people in politics are selfish and they're out for themselves rather than out for the country. I, I think that money in politics is one of the reasons it's like that. I, I'd like to see super PACs go away and I'd like to see money come out of politics. What thought, is, what, what, I'll oh, go ahead. Oh, the whole, the Trump Biden conversation is like cat poop or dog poop. What do you want? I'm like, I'm not hungry, man. This is why I don't like any of them personally. <laughs> well, I'm like, none of them. I don't want, no, I don't I, want, I don't I, want the dog crap. What, I don't want the poop crap. I don't, I don't, one thing that bothers I don't, me is I don't when, view it that way. I, I, I disagree. I, I, I think Biden is like a moldy sandwich where you're like, I know it's bad and you shouldn't eat it. And Trump is like, well, look, man, it's it's not the healthiest thing in the world for you, but it's food. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.